Bill. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, thank you, Mr. Cassidy. Uh, Mr. Schultz, thank you for being here. Thank well, you. I know this, this is pretty tough at times, but uh, it's good to hear your side of the story. You know, I came from the coaching profession. You know, for years I talked to young kids every year at the beginning of the year about they all wanted and needed something. I always told them one thing. The only thing you get from me and from this country is an opportunity. And you took that opportunity mm -hmm. and ran with it. And you've got a lot of people that work for you over the years and work for your company and their company and made something out of themselves. So thank you for that. You've, you've been a, a huge uh, uh, idol for this country in terms of what you've done. Uh, you know, we've heard a lot about what you give to your employees, health care and all that. You know, I, probably, I fully support unions. If people want to join a union, that's fine. I mean, I think that's what this country is about. Uh, sounds like Starbucks employees as a whole, what we've heard so far, have had a great working environment. I understand collective bargaining processes have ongoing with almost 300 individual stores, and you have to negotiate with each one of these individuals in each store, each individual, not each store. And I know that there have been difficulties in trying to navigate these individual negotiations. I'm sure obstacles have come up that are unique to each store. Is that correct? That is correct, sir. Thank you. You want uh, to be respectful, as we all do, of requests of any employee, and you want to make sure that every person or group that you deal with feels that their rights are being respected and their voices heard. This could even include employees with specific rights and protections in workplace. Is that correct? That's correct. I know this has been a long process that requires considerable effort on your side to do all this. So can you speak to me about the difficulties that you've been having in bargaining processes specifically in the unique issues that your average person might not understand? Yeah, thank you very much for that. Uh, when Buffalo uh, first emerged and there was a process to try and uh, decide whether or not we were going to negotiate per individual store or by district or region, it was the position of the union uh, to have it one store at a time. Uh, that created significant uh, complications and obstacles in the collective bargaining process. We now have to be put in a position to negotiate individual store one by one across the country and set up individual meetings. Now, because in this process, Star Starbucks managers and district managers have had safety issues in which the union, union organizers have been at their home, they have been outed on social media that have been significant challenges for our people to maintain their personal safety. We have said we do not want these meetings to be anything but face-to-face -face so we know who's in the room. We don't know if there's a Zoom meeting of who is taping the meeting, who's in the background, and who is looking in on the meeting and whether or not they are part of the company, part of the union, or whatever. And so we have asked respectfully, we will show up as we have 85 separate times in a face-to-face -face meeting, and we've tried to set up over 365 meetings. It is a very difficult scheduling issue and very difficult logistics issue. And we should not be held accountable for not showing up when all we're asking for is face-to-face -face bargaining. Thank you. I'd like to hear your story about your employee, if you'd tell. You got about a minute and a half. About? About, your, about the employee that you had the discussion. This morning? Uh, that you had the argument about and you might want to oh, go Oh, okay. Somewhere Thank else you for that. Yeah. Uh, when I came back to Starbucks, I held about 100 co-creation collaborative meetings across the country to understand from our employees what they were experiencing and the challenges of a post-COVID environment on their life at home, on their work life, work balance, et cetera. Those meetings were not about union negotiations. In fact, we made it clear, we're not here to talk about the union, we're here to talk about Starbucks. In a meeting in Long Beach, a Starbucks partner was trying to interrupt the meeting and start talking about the union. She happened to be sitting next to me. I didn't know she was recording it. I didn't know she was filming it. But it was clear that there was a disruptive mentality. I just turned to her and I said, if you don't like the company, if you hate the company, you could work somewhere else. It was not a threat. And going back to Chairman Sanders' question before, 
I can understand she may have misinterpreted what I said. It wasn't a threat. I didn't know I was being filmed. I just simply said, if you hate the company, you could go work somewhere else. Those hundred sessions that I attended are based on what we've done to improve the company, to understand the empathy and compassion we need to have for our people in a post-COVID environment. They were not union meetings. They were meetings to discuss Starbucks and the opportunity for our people. Thank, Thank you for the question. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Senator Casey. Mr. Chairman, thanks very much, and thanks for calling the hearing, Mr. Schultz. Welcome, and I want to welcome the, the workers in this room who have had to do so much, um, extend, expend so much effort over many years